morning everybody welcome to episode 55 i think i'm sure of my yarny corner my name's alex and i live in yorkshire in the uk and this is a podcast all about knitting and crochet so we're filming on a little bit of a different day today today is saturday june 10th and that is because i'm doing june vlogs so this will go live tomorrow on sunday and it'll be the same next fortnight as well. I'll film it on the Saturday just because I'm not vlogging on a weekend just to give myself a little bit of a break and to make sure I can still film the podcast as well. So it's not quite been two weeks. It's been a week and a half-ish. <laughs> How are we all doing? Have you all had a lovely couple of weeks? I've had a great couple of weeks. It's been absolutely fantastic. We've had gorgeous, gorgeous sunshine perfect sunshine not too hot you know sort of 19 20 degrees that is my perfect temperature so we've been just getting out and enjoying the sun and it's been fabulous absolutely fabulous as usual i will leave all the links to anything that i talk about in the description box below all the information about where you can find me is also linked in the description box below. I'm on Ravelry and Instagram and we have a fantastic Facebook group for the podcast. It's absolutely brilliant. There are such a fantastic group of people in that Facebook group. There really are. So if you've not joined the Facebook group yet, do come and say hello. Everybody is lovely. And yeah, so we've got one whip soon to be two and we've got the giveaway to announce i did announce it on the june vlogs um i'm waiting for one more person to get in touch and i did say that i would announce it here as well so i'm gonna do that i've got a test knit that i want to share with you how exciting and we've got a ton of finished objects so where shall we start i think we'll start with the giveaway first so me and danny had been doing a giveaway together well, he'd had his giveaway and I did mine as well. So mine was the Test Your Limits make-along. And the idea behind it was you just had to do something that was just pushing the boundaries a little bit. Maybe something you weren't confident with or something you wanted to try but you'd never done before. That kind of thing. And Danny's was the Take It Easy Mal. His idea was if you've been doing Alex's make-along, you're going to need to take it easy with mine. So that's how they both came about. We picked two winners each. Um, three people have got in touch and I'm just waiting for one more so I'm going to announce that last one I, um, I won't announce the three that have already been in touch because it's been done but the one person that I'm waiting for is Tina Fenico. I will put a picture of your winning entry on the screen and this is your yarn that you have won this is Summer Sky and it's absolutely beautiful, perfect for this time of year, absolutely gorgeous. So if you could get in touch with me, um, I'm Tina, I'm guessing, it's, a, the, it's your Instagram name, so I don't want to presume that your name is Tina, um, but if you could get in touch with me, um, preferably email, but our Instagram message is absolutely fine as well um or if you're in the facebook group i don't think you're in the facebook group i could be wrong um but yeah if you could get in touch with me and then i can get this prize on the way to you so i just want to say a huge huge whoops i'm just gonna pop that back in the drawer i don't want any cats getting near it and getting any cat hairs on it so i'm just gonna keep it back in there out of the way of animals I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody that took part in the make along. It was absolutely fabulous. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed every single second of it. I, I enjoyed seeing everybody's projects and I enjoyed seeing people writing that they were a bit nervous about trying something, but then they tried it and it wasn't as bad as what they thought it was. That just made my day, absolutely made my day. We had brioche, we had colour work, we had intarsia, we had socks, we had shawls, we had west knits. It was just perfect, absolutely perfect. So, yeah, I am super, super pleased. Um, there's no plans for any make-along. I'm tempted to announce a make-along at the moment, but there are no plans for any make-along in the next month. I may do one 
in a few weeks time but we're going to get over finishing this one um because i've also we've got we've had the ukraine make along as well that i did with karen from stitches and jacks and jeanette from crafty Clegs creations so we've done that as well which we're going to be wrapping that up next week so i want to get all that out of the way before i introduce another make along but there are so many good ones going on right now i'll probably talk about them as we're going along but there are so many good ones so the next thing that I want to get into before we get into finished objects is test knits. Now, I just need to get my sock blockers. I can't believe I forgot the sock blockers. I'm back. Um, sorry, I'm just, the window is just there where the back garden is and Stuart is in the garden. And I thought he was chasing the fly or something. He was really going for it. And it's not, it's a piece of grass, bless him. The, the next door neighbours, their hedging sort of comes through the fence and there's some bits of long grass, you know, how, how the grass sort of comes over like that. And it's that he's chasing. He's really entertaining himself. He's having a great time in the back garden. He's so funny. Although it wasn't at seven o'clock this morning. I must just tell you this. So I'm laid in bed this morning. And I could hear Stuart meow when he goes out on an evening and I can hear him meowing, which he often does. He'll come to the lounge window and our bedroom is above the lounge window. So he'll come to the lounge window and he'll meow because he wants his breakfast. If he's not had his breakfast by seven o'clock, you know, he's not happy. So he's meow, 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 meow and I could hear him. And then I heard this, Stuart, no. And I looked, I thought, well, that's not me. So I nudged Danny and I said, Danny, listen. And I heard this, Stuart, out. Now, no, go on, out. I thought, oh no, what's he done? So I looked out of the window. Next door neighbours have a conservatory. He'd climbed onto the conservatory and he was trying to get into their bedroom. I was mortified, just apologising profusely and then trying to get Stuart off the conservatory and into the house. I was so embarrassed. He's such a monkey. But yeah. So if he couldn't have his breakfast on time here, who's going to go next door and steal their cat's breakfast, I think. But yeah, bless him. Anyway, so I did do a test knit this past month. It's been very, very secret. Um, the test knit is for Linda, the lovely, lovely Linda. Um, she's just such a wonderful, wonderful person and friend. And she has a fantastic podcast and she does lots of lives. And she's just an all round fabulous person. And she has started designing patterns. So her first pattern, she'd written up and she was asking for testers. I jumped on it. You know, it was a sock pattern. I was straight in there. So this is what I've been doing. The pattern comes out today. And this is it. These are the Trophimus socks. Look at that definition on those stitches. Aren't they beautiful? They're absolutely gorgeous. It's a really, really, really easy pattern. Very, very well written. So the pattern itself has a heel flap and gusset. Um, but I was one of the testers that was doing a different heel. Obviously, I always do the shadow wrap heel anyway. Um, but I was doing a different heel just to be able to show that you can put whatever heel you want. So although the pattern comes with a heel flap and gusset, I have used the shadow wrap heel, which works perfectly. The pattern is on the front of the sock, not on the back, which means also an afterthought heel would work perfectly as well. And they are just absolutely gorgeous. I did like ankle socks. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? The pattern, I believe, is £2.50. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I need to get on and do my second sock. I haven't done my second sock yet. I'm going to get that done this week. So I was so pleased to be able to test this pattern. I really was. And Linda has done such an amazing job. It's such a well-written pattern. And what I really appreciated was there wasn't a ton of pages to the pattern. You, it was just perfect just absolutely perfect really easy to do and just gorgeous so these socks are out today if you would i would leave a link in the description box to um 
goodness me, Alex, I will leave a link in the description box if you want to check out the pattern. It's gorgeous. So they are by Linda Simpson Designs. I'll link Linda's podcast as well, so you can go and check out Linda on the podcast. I'm sure many of you already do. She's lovely. She's absolutely lovely, is Linda. So that is my first half finished object and my super secret test knit that I've been working on in the background. <laughs> so let's get in to some finished objects. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee, which I've put in this cup because usually when I'm podcasting and I've got a coffee, it goes stone cold before I even get halfway through. So I've put it in my thermos cup. So on the last episode, I was talking about the slip extravaganza. I love this pattern. You know how I feel about Stephen West. I think he is an amazing knitting designer and I absolutely love this pattern. I did struggle with it a lot when it came to the end and it wasn't anything about the pattern. It was just, there were so many stitches. It was taking such a long time to get through the rows. And usually when I'm knitting, my knitting is pick up, put down, pick up, put down, just because I'm busy. So, and I don't like to leave knitting mid row. So I felt like once I'd started a row, I had to finish it. So it was just, it was getting really like, oh, I've, I've had enough of this pattern. So I'd been umming and ahhing. I'd talked so much about it on the other episodes. What am I going to do? I only had 12 rows to go, but I just didn't have the oomph to finish it. As I was editing the podcast, I realised just do the I-card bind off from where you are. It will work and it will look lovely. So that is what I did. And I've finished my slip extravaganza and honestly, I could not be more pleased with it. So you can see at the bottom where the yellow is, I just put the I-card border on. I was on the wrong side row. I wasn't going back to get to a right side row and it works perfectly. So this bit, this is where I finished early. It should have had a yellow section and then this bluey section and then a black eye card bind off. But actually, let me just move those sock blockers. It is the perfect size. If I want to wear it, like I do in the winter, it's perfect. But I think how I'm going to get more use out of this one is actually like a shawl. When I get up on a morning and it's cold, this is how I'm going to wear it. It is just perfect. I'll stand up so you can see. I'll move the chair out of the way a minute. There we go. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just lovely. And it, look how long it is. It's massive, absolutely massive. So I think this is probably how I will wear it more than anything. Be something that I throw on on a morning if it's a little bit nippy, but I mean, lengthwise, <clears throat> it's still bigger than my wingspan. You can't even see, but it's bigger than my wingspan. It's absolutely gorgeous. I am so pleased with the colors. This section here, I did modify. Um, in the pattern, you use two colours, but you stripe them in each honeycomb. And I just wanted solid colours. So rather than striping, I just did one pink, one yellow, one pink, one yellow, and so on. Loved this section. This was a really fun section to do. I mean, I didn't help myself because I chose the black. So that just limited me working on it on a night time. Um, Obviously, you know, I love this brick section. It's one of my favourite stitch patterns. This one. These triangles were a little bit mind numbing because they were all done separately. So that was a little bit mind numbing, but they didn't take long. So once I got on with it, it was just at the very end, there was just under a thousand stitches on the needles. And oh my word, did it take some time. So, but I cannot be more pleased with it. I'm absolutely blown away with it. So one very, very happy Alex with the strip stra slip extravaganza. So finished object number one. We have five. Um, the next one, I need to get that over there. One second. So I have this scrap jar. And anything that goes in here is five grams. 
what, about five grams of yarn. If I've only got a gram left, I don't tend to keep it. Um, but normally you've got between five and 10 grams left. So anything around five grams, between four and six grams goes in here. Now this was overflowing, absolutely overflowing. There was yarn piled up up here and it's been annoying me a little bit. So I decided to do some scrappy socks. Beyond pleased with these. So I did eight rounds per stripe and that used about four and a half grams. Let me just pop them on blockers. And I got 14, when I say it used four and a half grams, I mean for both socks, I don't mean per sock. Um, so I used 14 scraps of yarn for these socks. So I made these, look at these, aren't they gorgeous? I did a two by two rib. So on the leg, I did the two by two rib all the way around the leg. And then I put the shadow wrap heel in and then I just did a two by two rib on the foot and plain stockinette underneath and my standard, I still don't know what toe it's called. Is it wedge toe? I don't know. My standard toe for knitting socks and I absolutely love them. So I used what 2.5 millimeter needles and like I said, just two by two rib all the way down. So there's no specific cuff and just eight rounds per stripe, which I thought worked out lovely. I am so pleased with these and got so many of my scraps used. I have been saving these for the podcast since last week, I think. I can finally wear them, although at the moment it's a little bit warm for this these socks, but what makes me laugh more than anything, and you can't see it so much on these socks, you will on the other socks I'm gonna show, is when you make rib socks, they look so weird until you've either got them on your foot or on the blocker. They just look so skinny and strange, but they stretch so much. Rib socks are perfect for stretch. And yeah, so I am really, really pleased with those. I finally have a pair of scrappy socks. I was really good, I wove in the ends. I didn't knit them two at a time, but I did knit them concurrently. So I'd put the blue stripe in one, the blue stripe in the other, the black stripe in one, the black stripe in the other. And I wove in the ends as I was going as well. I didn't want to get to the end of the sock and have all those ends to weave in, but yeah. So do you remember when I did the Snoopy blanket? And I'd, this is where my dread of ends come from. I left all the ends in that Snoopy blanket and then I had so many to do at the end. And ever since then, I've never left ends. I've always woven them in straight away. The same thing has happened with scraps. I don't know how I've got to this point, but the same thing has happened with scraps. And I'm gonna explain what I mean. So, you know, my friend Sue sent me some Felici yarn. Oh, my word, I just love it. So immediately cast on a pair of socks for me. So I'll show you these. Absolutely love these. And side note, Lisa from 72 Stitches um, Knit All The Yarn podcast is holding a make along for Knit All The Felici. I'll link Lisa's podcast in the description box below if you're into using Felicia yarn she's got a make along for it so you can enter it into Lisa's make along as well but so I immediately cast on socks for myself which are these aren't they just amazing and I had quite a bit of yarn well I'm saying quite a bit of yarn left I think I had 55 60 grams of the yarn left and I couldn't leave it. I thought, I do not want to just put that into stash to be not used again. So these ones are just my standard vanilla sock recipe. I do 15 rounds of two by two ribbon, 64 stitches, and I do between 30 and 40 rounds on the leg. Depends how I'm feeling. Depends if there's a pattern on it where that would take me into that point. This has got around 40 yarns on the leg. Uh, 40 rounds on the leg, not 40 yarns. That'd be a really long sock. 
and then I do 56 rounds for the foot or thereabouts between 53 and 54 uh, 53 and 57 will fit me it depends again if there's a pattern on the sock where that you know drops in for this round count but yeah absolutely love them and contrasting heels and toes and trusty shadow wrap heel so like I say I had about 55 60 grams of yarn left and I just thought I do not want to leave all that yarn and then it go into stash and then it never to be seen again because I do have a habit of doing that and I think it's from the scrap jar seeing all them scraps not getting used and what I could make from them I think it's kind of stayed with me a little bit so I decided to get on and use the yarn so I made a sock head slouch with what was left I love the sock head slouch pattern. This is a pattern by Kelly McClure. Now, it's supposed to have four inches of ribbon for the brim. I've made this pattern that many times. I know what fits me and I think I did two and a half inches. I never do the four inches of ribbon anymore. And I don't go anywhere near the, the amount of length that she calls for in the pattern either. I do like a slouchy hat, but not massively so. So once I got past my ribbon, I started the decreases at seven inches. And I know that that, for me, gives me a perfect, perfect amount of slouch. Just a little bit, but not massive. And it fits me lovely. I don't know what my hair's doing there. Isn't it gorgeous? And it's blocked. And I blocked it as well. It was a gorgeous day after I finished it, so I couldn't not block it. But isn't it lovely? So I was so proud of myself for using up the yarn and I've got such a gorgeous hat. And I've managed to find a contrast mini as well for the ribbon, which I think looks just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And I still had a tiny, tiny bit of this yarn left. And I thought, I'm not leaving it. I'm just not leaving it. I'm going to use every scrap. So I did a granny square as well. And what I thought I'd do is when I've got scraps of yarn, these take about eight or nine grams, I will just make a square when I've got yarn left over. And then I'm not going to plan to do anything with them. FYI, it is the right size uh, granny square if I want to make another Ariana cardigan. I made sure it was right, just in case the temptation was there to make another Ariana cardigan just because I would love another one, I really would, and I would like it with, where I've got white as the joining yarn, I'd like it with black. But I could easily turn it into a blanket or, or anything. Granny squares, you can just do anything with. So I've even used the last bit of yarn and just did a little square. And I can honestly say I have used every scrap of that Felici yarn. That makes me really happy. I did do another granny square as well because I had another 10 grams of yarn kicking around. This was um, our colourway, it was the coronation colourway that we did. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I've got two granny squares. I'm not going to rush to, you know, make granny squares. If I feel like making some some days, I, I will just do it. And if I don't, it doesn't matter. As soon as I've got any scraps, I'll use whatever's left and pop it into a granny square. So these are done with a three millimeter hook and it's just a simple granny square and I've done eight rounds, which like I say, is what I would need if I did the Ariana cardigan. The Ariana cardigan, if you don't know, I'll pop a picture on the screen. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. It's a DK weight pattern. I did it with my advent calendar last year and I used four ply and I just did more rounds so I got the square to the correct size. I'll leave a link to that pattern in the description box below and if you want to make one in four ply using your scraps like I did, it's on my Ravelry page, everything that I did. And I think I've, there's a video, I did talk about it in a video, I will see if I can link it either up above or in the description box below. So that's my next two finished objects. And then, of course, I need to do Danny's June socks. 
and Sue had very, very kindly sent some knit picks for Leachy Yarn for Danny as well. So I'm going to show you these before I put them on the blockers because I vlogged about these on, was it Thursday? And I cannot get over how weird these ones look. They look ridiculously long. They fit Danny perfectly. They're exactly the right size for Danny. But as I was knitting these, I was saying they're too long. They look huge. And my friend Sue said to me, it's a combination of the stripes and the ribbon that makes it look so long. But I couldn't get over how weird they looked. Now, Danny's been itching for these socks, absolutely itching for them. And I've not let him have them until I've shown them on the podcast. So he's had to wait. I get him today. You get him today. <laughs> He actually took them off me yesterday and put them on his feet. I had to wrestle them off his feet. <laughs> so bad. But there we go. Don't they look amazing? Absolutely amazing. So again, I've put a contrast heel and toe in. And I did exactly the same for Danny that I did for my ribbed socks. Two by two ribbing all the way down the legging, up to the, all the way down the legging, the leg, up to the heel. Then I popped a shadow wrap heel in. And then I just did the two by two ribbon on the foot and stocking stitch underneath and then put the toe on and they fit him perfectly. So he is really, really pleased with those and he finally gets his June socks. I've done so well. I've kept up with his sock knitting journey and I've done really, really well. So I'm so pleased. So of course I had yarn left over now because... I'd done these for Danny, I didn't have as much yarn left over, but I did have yarn left over. So, oh, if I just reach behind the camera, the Knit Picks yarn comes in 50 gram balls. So my friend had sent me two of each for our colourways. Now the first one, I had 24 grams left. The second one, because I matched up the socks so they would match perfectly I had to take a little bit of yarn off so I only had 21 grams left now I thought what am I going to do with the leftovers I, I was pretty certain there wasn't enough yarn to make another pair of socks and I've been watching Lisa again from 72 stitches knit all the yarn podcast and Amy from happy little yarn now they are both knitting. I don't know what it's called because I don't know who's running it. But basically what you do is you take an advent kit and with your 20 gram mini, you knit a sock. You put contrast, heels, toes and cuffs on and you knit a sock. And the idea is none of the socks match. They would be sort of in the same family if you use the same contrast, heels, toes and cuffs. But out of a 20 gram mini, minus the heels, toes and cuffs, you could get a decent sized sock. So this was playing in my head, which I must admit, I am tempted to do that with my advent calendar this year. How cool would that be just to have, all, you know, there's no second sock syndrome because you're just making one sock out of your 20 gram mini. It's such a good idea. And they've both been doing it and making some amazing socks. But this had sort of stayed in my head. So when I realised I only had 20 grams, I thought, but I could just knit a sock tube until I run out. So I took my smaller skein of yarn which had 21 grams on it and that's what I've done I'm just knitting a sock tube I know that I need nine stripes of this for his foot and I've looked through the colours and I'm pretty certain I'll get 11 stripes in total which would mean it'd be like a shorty sock and I'd pop the heel in here so I'm just going to knit away and see how far I get but yeah I'm pretty certain I'll get a decent sized sock Danny likes shorty socks anyway, and I will have used every last scrap of this yarn. I'll probably have maybe four grams left to go into the scrap jar. But yeah, I'll have used every last scrap. So he's actually getting a second pair of socks. These are just vanilla, and like I say, I'll just pop an afterthought heel in, and I'm going to do black as the contrast heels, toes, and cuffs. But yeah, aren't they gorgeous? So that's it for the whips. But there is one that I'm casting on today. I'm reaching behind the camera again. I'm so sorry. Let me just have a sip of my coffee. I need to get the yarn. I'll get that in a second. So yesterday, 
I was watching Ellie from Craft House Magic and she did like a craft vlog. It was really, really good. Really enjoyed it. It was just fabulous. And she was showing the Aria shawl that she'd made. It's a DK weight shawl and she did it in the most gorgeous colours. It was like a teal and like a hot pink. It was absolutely beautiful. She was saying that there is, it, the pattern is by Amber O'Brien and she was saying there is also a fingering weight version. So I headed on over to Ravelry and I found this fingering weight version and that, that is called the Zaria shawl and it's absolutely beautiful. So I had, there's going to be a few tangents to this, let me just get I had some Tooth Fairy yarn. I'll talk about that in a minute. Of why I had Tooth Fairy yarn. But I had this yarn. My friend Sue bought me it. It's one of our yarns. It's what we dyed in the live. And I'll explain it in a little bit about it. So I had this yarn and I really wanted to make something really special with it. And I wanted to pair it with a black. How gorgeous would that look? So, when Ellie showed this pattern, I immediately thought of my yarn and I thought, oh, I just love it. I just absolutely love it. I was talking about it on the vlog yesterday and I said, I'm going to get it when I get paid and I'm, it's just going to be gorgeous. One of the lovely, lovely viewers, when I woke up this morning, it was sat in my Ravelry library. Somebody gifted me the pattern. I'm not going to say a name. But I was just absolutely blown away. It was the biggest surprise this morning. And I just felt so, so blessed. You know, I don't expect anybody to buy me any patterns or anything. But it was just the best, the best surprise this morning. It really was. So I'll be casting this on today. So this is the Zaria shawl. Isn't it gorgeous? And with the pattern came the Aria shawl. This is the one that Ellie did and it came with this one. So this one is the DK weight version and this one is the fingering weight version. Isn't it beautiful? So I was just absolutely blown away. I really was. So you need two skeins of yarn and you just cast on and get knitting. <laughs> it's just absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant so once i've edited the podcast today i am going to be casting this on so thank you so so much for that pattern and i'm going to spend the weekend working on this totally utterly spoiled and so so pleased so so pleased i'm so looking forward to just a weekend of a new pattern i really am so that's everything for the knitting content Oh, let's pop that there. So I did get some Tooth Fairy yarn, which I've just said I'll explain. I had to go to the dentist again on, what day was it? Thursday. You know, I'd had the tooth out the other week. If you don't like dentists, you might want to skip this bit. I'm not going to go into any great detail of anything. I know that it's a trigger for some people, as it's always been for me, to be perfectly honest. I hate dentists. I have a huge phobia of the dentist. I absolutely detest it. I've not been enough in my life to get over a fear of the dentist. I haven't had a proper dentist for years. I've had the odd emergency treatment when I've needed it, but nothing for years. So I mentioned it on the other episode. I was very, very lucky I ended up in quite a lot of pain one day and I'd rung our local 111 service to get a dentist and normally they would send you to the dental hospital but they actually sent me to a dentist a few miles away and he, he took the tooth out that was causing all the pain but I had another one where a filling had come out and there was it, it needed to come out and he said you're going to have to come back he said I need to take that other tooth out he said because that's going to start soon so I was incredibly lucky that the dentist, you know, even though I went in as an emergency patient, he's done the work that needs doing. So for the first tooth that I had out, I did get some tooth fairy yarn. Because obviously you've got to do, haven't you? <laughs> so when I was going again, the first time I went was it, 
it wasn't as bad because I was in so much pain. You know, you get to that point where you're like, I don't care. I'm in so much pain. Just do what you need to do. The second time I went was a little bit different because I wasn't in pain. But I know that I had to have the work done. So this yarn was in the shop. It's what we dyed in the live. And it had been sat in the shop. And I said to Danny, I'd really like that if it's still there when I've had my tooth out and my tooth fairy, I know I sound like such a baby. I am aware of this, but it was the only thing that was getting me through, knowing that I had yarn at the end of it. So I said, if it's still there, I really, really want it. So he'd been in the shop and been in the shop. So it come to Thursday morning. I'm like, right, okay, is it still there? And then I said, no, it's sold. And I went, what? <laughs> and he said, no, Alex, I'm really sorry, it's sold. <laughs> So I thought, well, it's okay. I can get Danny to dye another one. It's fine. It's fine. That's what the yarn's there for in the shop. It's to sell. It's not my stash. <laughs> anyway, when we came out with the dentist, Danny gave it to me. He said, Sue bought it for you. So it hadn't gone anywhere. Sue had just contacted Danny and they'd played this little game between them where they wound me up in the best way. The best way it really was and Sue bought me this yarn. So I was beyond pleased and I was so brave. I really was so brave. I know what a baby I sound like, I really do. But the fear is huge, absolutely huge. But all the major work is now done and I've got to go back in a month and they're gonna give me a partial denture because I have no teeth now. <laughs> So I'm going to have that done as well, which is just absolutely amazing because I get really embarrassed when I smile. I know that you can see, you know, what's gone on with my teeth. So I do get really embarrassed. So it will be really nice to be able to just not have that feeling of being embarrassed. And yeah, I know that I've been so, so lucky to get a dentist that's done everything that needs doing. And yeah, so I was... That, all that was to say, I was very, very brave. I really was. And it's easy to be brave when you've got yarn at the end of it, though, right? <laughs> so I'm going to be casting on the Zaria shawl. So I've been totally spoiled. I've got yarn. I've got a pattern. And it's just perfect. It really is. So the plans for this weekend are nothing but knit. I am not going anywhere. I am not doing anything. And I'm just going to sit and knit for the weekend and it's going to be fabulous. I hope you've all got some lovely plans this weekend. Um, yeah, the sun's shining. I can get all the washing done on the line. It'll all dry. And it's just, it's just going to be so relaxed and lovely this weekend. It really is. So I haven't been vlogging on a weekend. We've been taking the weekend as a break. I said this at the start of the podcast. It just makes it a little bit easier for me vlogging there's a lot of work that goes into vlogging with the editing every single day so when you've got that little bit of a break at a weekend it just kind of reignites you so when I finish on a Friday I know that I've done it and I've got a little bit of a break on the weekend that reignites me then for Monday so I come back full steam ahead on Monday which has worked really really well and it just means that I can film the podcast as well which I really wanted to do because although the poor people that have watched the vlogs have seen all this because I said at the start of the vlogs, I'm not going to show knitting. I'm still doing the podcast, so I'm not going to show knitting and I've shown everything. I couldn't keep my little mouth shut. I've been like, I've done this and I've done this and I'm doing this. Honestly, I'm terrible. I couldn't keep a secret if you paid me. How I've kept the test knit secret, I don't know. I had to put it into a bag and then put it in the cubby hole and try and forget about it so I didn't accidentally talk about it because I cannot keep secrets. When we did the mystery boxes last year, when we do a mystery box, we put something in it that will never go on sale in the shop. So last year it was the My Yarny Corner Teddy Bear. And it's this one here. And it says Danny's line on the back, which is Take It Easy, and it's got the My Yarny Corner logo, and it's so cute. So obviously I'd made all these long before the mystery boxes went out and I popped it there. <laughs> I'd been really careful during the vlogs for not showing it, but when it came to, I was filming a podcast, it came to filming the podcast, I sat here, filmed an entire podcast with it sat there. 
so I had to totally scrap the podcast I'd filmed because I knew that people would know that that was part of the mystery box and I had to film an entire second podcast because I couldn't couldn't keep a secret I am terrible anyway never mind never mind I hope that you're all okay and I hope you've had a lovely crafty two weeks I'll be back again for the podcast in two weeks time we're back for the vlog on Monday we've also Thursday is the next live dying that we're doing which I really hope some of you can make it. It'll be Thursday at 8 o'clock on the YouTube channel and we're going to be dyeing yarn live again. It's not a tutorial, it's just a little bit of fun. People give colour ideas, we, we throw them in the pan, we see what we can, can come up with and it's just, for us, it's a really fun way of dyeing yarn. It's a really fun way of interacting with everybody else. I have never had so much fun dyeing yarn as we did in the last live dye that we did. So we're going to do it once a month. So that's this Thursday. So that day there won't be a vlog, um, just because we've got the the live the live dying that day. But yeah. So anyway, I'm going to stop waffling. Have a lovely crafty two weeks if you're only here for the podcast. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow if you're coming back for the vlogs, and just have a lovely crafty time, everybody. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.